like to share what you have with the world, or just us? Cool, thanks. Give it up, guys, for Talal. How y'all doing? What if this is God's work? Wow. What if, what if real poets walk the earth and live lives spent for prophets, birds spreading ancient wisdom like the Coptic Church, and those that know what they're hearing know that they're hearing something special, and perhaps eventually a poet to be sent here just to bless you. Test you in this world of lies, and you feel your eyes crowded because they recognize it. What they're seeing is the truth. And the chills of those farms provide absolute proof that in this now, where politicians and clergy are proving themselves unworthy of your time, and television shows and music videos are proving themselves unworthy of your mind, don't be surprised to find that God is especially present in poetry dance. Guiding poets pens and not just those men who pretend to be closer to God than you by making you ashamed of your sins when the lives that they've lived may not have been what God intends for your salvation. What if this is God's work? What if the Creator realized that the creation isn't perfect but only wishes for us to worship sincerely? To, to not be hypocrites but to really be concerned about our fellow man? To stand up against injustice is falsely perpetuated in God's name in foreign lands? What if this is God's work? What if the poets are closer to Muhammad, Buddha, and Jesus than the preachers? I said, what if the poets are closer to Muhammad, Buddha, and Jesus than the preachers? I mean, think about it, y'all. Which is a little closer to the streets, and which is a little closer to Caesar? Which is a little high up in the hall, and which is the poor righteous teachers? What if this is God's work? And if so, then poetry is sacred. So you poets to be concerned, just step up on this stage with it, be on your job, because if this is God's work, then stealing from the poet is the same thing as stealing from God. Awesome. Awesome. It's not about your use of sexuality or profanity, it's about whether you use your tools for odds and oohs, uh, whether you use your tools to improve humanity. What if this is God's work? No, no blasphemers have held to pay, so I wouldn't say anything at the coffee cage tonight, but I wouldn't be comfortable repeating on Judgment Day. What if this is God's work, y'all? Let us pray. Blasted out of my sleep, 6 o'clock in the morning. Some maniac outside, they don't know his call horn, gotta go outside and teach him the proper etiquette. Neighborhood bad enough, can't let it get worse than it already is. You hear me? Y'all can talk back. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, wow. I need my sleep. That's the only time on this planet that I've been getting me peace. I tried that college thing on some American green tip, but yet I still live on the same street that I grew up on. Them same streets that I grew up on. My mother hoped that I would surpass at least in middle class, but yet I'm still stuck on that same mentality. And, and all those years of college ain't even challenged me. But when I graduated, life was right there to put a degree in my hands and I put on my chest and here I am dressed in my pajamas, no slippers, about to run outside and rip the backbone out of this school. Ain't got nothing to show for all those years of school, but bad credit. <laughs> and even worse, decisions. And I live in a neighborhood where people buy food on credit so they finance it, they don't just take it in. Making payments on food that they already ate. When they see me on the street, they're looking at me like they're about to break and I'm snatching over this door like I'm about to break and I see my best friend. And he's sitting in a minivan with four of those child car seats and he's looking at me with a gun in his hand. It's like I can hear his heart beating. With his other hand, he takes a swig of liquor from a bottle of scotch, pops the door, locks like it in. Moves the pictures of his children off the car seat with a gun, throws them in a the glove box and it's like everything stops. And we drive, and we drive, and we drive till we get to the part of town where it seems like the American dream is still alive. And in my mind, I'm playing in the Simones and looking out the window on the passenger side. And it's like somebody scraping their fingernails along my bones as I feel this grown man cry. And I wonder if he knows that tens of millions of people in this country are depressed but using alcohol or drugs to remain in denial. I wonder if he knows that there's a suicidal tendency hiding behind almost every smile because no matter how many times they're back to school or how many jobs they work simultaneously, they can never seem to permanently change their lifestyle. But somehow, they convince themselves that it'd be different for their children. And eventually, they realize that's a fantasy, but they need something to believe in until then. And him, he just wants to be a father to his children. But sometimes, y'all, after all the love is gone, children become pawns in a relationship. And his relationship with his children is the vehicle that his ex-wife chooses to take out her frustrations with him. If he's just one day late on the child support, she reports it to the court. Mm. Was driving him crazy. And yesterday, he just got laid off. Now, 30 days ago, her and the kids just moved in with a new man who drives a Range Rover and plays golf. And that's a year ago from the day that my best friend had to go to jail for making her last boyfriend stop telling the children that their father was slow. And right now, he feels like everything's lost. That's why I'm glad he came to me to give me this opportunity to put a few thoughts across. You see, all day and all night, we talk. 
And I tell him, a man is judged by what's in his soul and what's in his heart, and not just by what's in his pockets. I tell him, me and him are friends who think of him, that he can pay me to put our brain, time, and money together to stop it. I tell him the fact that we have a lot of money is a problem, and rather than getting fed up, what you need to do is wake up like Moses and Jacob, and if we get together, just find new ways to profit. Because in my eyes, our friendship is how we live and how we die. And don't you ever believe, even for a second, that I would ever let you slide. Now, what I'm about to say, I want you to listen with all your pride and sexuality aside, because as God is my guide, like my own self, I love you. So y'all want to try something? Yeah, okay, okay.